Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Yes, different year, same shit. <laughs> so, I wonder if you can cast your mind back to around about a year ago when I featured a Yamato game uh, in a video entitled Wham Bam Thank You Yam. Well, this isn't him, but on the strength of that Yamato battle going up onto YouTube, he managed to get himself into a good clan, which was where he ran into this guy. BFK for life. BFK for life here in the Smolensk is the holder of the North American server damage record in this tier 10 Soviet light cruiser. This is not that battle. Unfortunately that replay file has been lost into the mists of time so you're simply going to have to put up with this one which is the second highest amount of damage done in the Smolensk on the North American server also by BFK for life. Now, the artist who starred in the Wham Bam Thank You Yam video is not present in this particular battle, but he was watching it on Twitch and he asked BFK for life for permission to submit this replay into me, and that is why you're watching it today. You may have also noticed that he seems a little bit pink. Yeah, there's a good reason for that. The gentleman who sent the replay file in, Elgar72, also sent me a link to the Twitch clip where BFK for life here earned himself that pink nameplate. Um, there was nothing malicious about it. He and a division mate were racing each other to see who could be the first to sink the last ship on the enemy team. And BFK here got a little bit over enthusiastic with his torpedoes. But anyway, you can see that BFK for life is divisioned up with a Fletcher, which is kind of curious. Not entirely sure why. I mean, the Smolensk is a tier 10 cruiser, the Fletcher is a tier 9 destroyer. Why a Fletcher? Why, why not a Gearing or any other tier 10 destroyer? I'd love nothing more than to reveal to you some kind of profound tactical secret as to why a Fletcher is the best possible destroyer to match up with the Smolensk, but honestly, I just think it's because he's got Fletch in his name and he really likes the Fletcher. Whatever. It is, however, a very good pairing for a Smolensk. Because, well, here it is. American smokescreen. Huge, lasts forever. BFK's popped his hydro, just in case of torpedoes. He's going to take advantage of that lovely American smoke while Fletch cruises around outside the smokescreen, continuing to spot targets, launching torpedoes at them, and BFK goes to work. Now, this is not, of course, an entirely foolproof plan, because, well, you know, radar. But that's an Alaska. It's American radar. And it doesn't have the range. And that Alaska has just extinguished a single fire. <laughs> <laughs> Damage control, a single fire while spotted in open water and getting hosed down by 16 130mm guns every three and a half seconds. Oh look, he's on fire again. Well, who saw that one coming? He might also eat a torpedo if he's very unlucky, but I suspect he's probably seen them by now. Anyway, Iowa closing in. Still no radar threat, no torpedo spotted, which hopefully... Aha! There they are. This is of course is why he was running hydro, because smoke screens are torpedo magnets. And watch how calmly he avoids these torpedoes. I thought he was going to just try to reverse out of the way. That would of course meant leaving the smoke screen. And check this out. Very, very fine throttle control. And he's managed to avoid them all while remaining undetected and continuing the barrage on those enemy ships down to the south. Focusing on the Iowa. I was giving him a nice big black broadside, switching to the armor-piercing shells. He's not going to Citadel in Iowa with 130mm guns, but the AP will do more damage. Until such time, there we go, a nice 6,000 damage salvo. Until such time as the Iowa angles away, and then of course he's just going to switch straight back to high explosive. But look at the way the Iowa's turning. Oops. That's not ideal. He's got a choice here, he can run into the island and then just sit there and take it. And BFK has now switched back to the high explosive. Or, oh and there's another fire. Or, um, 
Yeah, there's no... He's dead. The Iowa is dead. There is no way he's getting out of this. He chose not to run into the island, but, well, that just means that he's now given an even bigger target for BFK to shoot at. And BFK is not the only one shooting at him. He's switched back to the arm piercing. And he's pretty confident, and he was right, that that is going to kill the Iowa. There's his first kill, there's the emergency reserve talent activated, so an extra charge on all of his consumables. He is now radar, but nobody's shooting at him. Why is that? I think it was because if he's been radar, that means the Fletcher, who is closer to the enemy team, has been radar too. And at least one of those enemy ships did take a shot at the Fletcher, and at least two of them were lining up for shots on the MK, but just before they could fire, the radar expired, and he's still inside the smoke screen, so he's once again managed to go undetected. His own smoke screen is going to expire any second now, however, but well, this is why he divisioned up with a Fletcher. From any American destroyer, really. Because while his smoke is about to die, the Fletcher's is ready to go again. And there it is. And that's real bad news for this Bismarck. He's already up to 131,000 damage, and the game's only six minutes old. The Bismarck over there receiving an extremely unhealthy dose of the medicine that the Iowa was just forced to swallow. And I'm pretty sure that's a double fire, and he's not running fire prevention. Which means, and I have to admit, in this situation, I would have continued shooting at the Bismarck. But BFK is confident that the Bismarck is going down and switches his fire to the Georgia. I have to admit, at this point, I thought he'd made a mistake. I thought he'd let the Bismarck get away as he switches to the armor piercing to rake the Georgia's broadside and some shots came into the smoke screen, I think from the Alaska over there, but well, he clearly knows his capabilities better than I do. He did manage to get the Bismarck. There's killed with the two. He's up to nearly 200,000 damage and continuing to pour death and destruction down on the Georgia. It looks like he's popped his engine boost. Yes, the Georgia is a battleship with an engine boost, an extremely fast battleship with an engine boost, and appears to know what's good for him as he motors on out of there in order to try to get out of the line of fire. But I don't think he's going to get away with it. He's angling away now, back to the high explosive. The fire is out. Can he finish off the Georgia? I think he can. There's another fire. Yep. He's now confident that he's got the Georgia, and he has. There's kill number three. 217,000 damage. He's switching fire to the Alaska. The Alaska is inside radar range. But, is it on cooldown? No, there's the radar. The problem is, of course, that there is absolutely nobody in a position to take advantage of that radar. There isn't a single ship on the enemy team other than the destroyer that keeps launching sneaky torpedoes into the smoke screen, who's actually in a position to do anything about the fact that BFK has been spotted. The Alaska's backed off around the side of the island because he sees the Baiji coming in. How many times have you played a Smolensk, been radared, and nobody has shot at you? <laughs> Not once, but twice. In the same game. What's going on? Second Alaska spotted, torpedoes away. But this Alaska is at least paying attention to the map and is turning in to avoid any torpedoes. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the friendly Baiji, who was chasing the first Alaska around the side of the island there. Obviously, the Alaska backed up because he didn't want to face the Baiji's 16 inch guns. The Baiji took the bait, came around the corner, and, well, if the Howland hadn't finished him off with his guns, he absolutely would have finished him off with the torpedoes. At least one torpedo hit the wreck. So this now leaves BFK for life and his friend in the Fletcher facing off against not one but two radar cruisers and a very sneaky Howland. There is some crossfire going in there from a friendly Ibuki, but he is definitely not going to want to get shot at by a pair of battle cruisers, so he's making himself scarce. Torpedoes there from the Fletcher. Radar up again, but once again, BFK has gotten himself into a position where even if he has been radared, it doesn't make the slightest bit of difference because not one of those two Alaskas is in a position to actually shoot at him. The Howland might be, 
but he doesn't seem to want to get into a gunfight with the Smolensk. He doesn't have a line of sight either, and in fact, while BFK is spotted again, it's from Hydro. He's now close enough that the second Alaska over there, who looks like he's managed to avoid the Fletcher's torpedoes, has him detected on Hydro, but that's fine. All you have to do is destroy the ship that's using the Hydro. And there's point number four. He is now surface spotted, of course, but he doesn't really care because, well, we just saw the Halland abandoning the Alaska there to his fate, sneaking into cover behind the island, which means the first Alaska has just run out of friends and he's now in a gunfight with the Smolensk. And while technically he doesn't have the DPM for that, watch these shots there. That was a lot of damage. Generally speaking, when a Smolensk is getting shot at by battleship caliber guns, such as those found on the Alaska. Its best option, I know there are the uh, Halland torpedoes. The Smolensk best option is usually just to give the flat broadside because large caliber armor piercing shells will over penetrate while doing minimal damage. It's when you're kiting away from or charging towards a ship armed with large caliber armor piercing shells that they will actually penetrate and detonate inside without over-penetrating because they have to travel the entire length of the ship in order to do it. Having said that, however, the Alaska did start this fight on such low health that he would have had to get extremely lucky in order to not lose it. And he didn't get extremely lucky, and he did lose it. And that was BFK's Crack It Unleashed with 272,000 damage done. And he's still losing. <laughs> There's still only one other member of his team who's actually managed to sink something, and that's his buddy in the Fletcher. His team don't have a single cap circle. Well, they did have Bravo in the middle of the map, but that's being flipped. And they're losing on kills and points. Well, what's a guy to do? <laughs> oh no, now I have to kill you all. Start with the Azulane Sovetsky Russia. Once again, ooh, hang on a second, Benham. An extremely dangerous destroyer, thanks mostly to its ridiculous torpedo load, but it's no slouch in a gunfight either, and it could conceivably have won the gunfight against the Fletcher, up until the point where BFK for life got involved, because a Benham is never going to win a gunfight against a Fletcher and the Smolensk. He smoked up, too little, too late, the Fletcher gets his second kill, good job. They're still losing, of course. <laughs> because the team have just lost their Massachusetts. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, who's the biggest threat here? The Hindenburg? Benham torpedoes. No problem. Spotted them well in time. The Hindenburg is definitely the biggest threat. I mean, they've already eliminated the radar threat. They've sunk both of the Alaskas. And now it's the Hydro threat. And the German Tier 10... Heavy Cruisers Hydro is in effect a mini radar. Has about half the range of a radar, but it lasts forever. And it's much longer range than the Hydros of other nations. So the Hindenburg needs to die, and he is going to die. I mean, he's on fire. Wait, there was the damage control. He's gone undetected, but there is another fire. And he's undetected because the Fletcher doesn't enjoy getting shot at by 8 inch high explosive shells either, but well, if the fire hadn't been enough to kill him, and it probably would have, the shots in the air got the job done. And there's kill number six. And for what is almost the first time in this game, BFK is actually getting shot at by targets that can see him. Battleship caliber armor piercing coming in from the Sovetsky Russia. Oh wait, he was broadside on. He's in a Smolensk, they overpenetrated, and only did 10% down. And now the Sovetsky Russia is on fire. He's on fire in the bows. There's another fire midships. There's a double fire. But look at the angle that he's giving to the North Carolina. See this? Boom. That was an actual armor-piercing penetration. And that's just about the only time you're ever going to get an actual armor-piercing penetration on the Smolensk with battleship caliber armor-piercing shells. When it's either pointing straight away from or straight towards you. Because then the shell actually gets a chance to detonate inside the structure of the ship penetrates the upper deck or the rear, travels along the length of the ship and explodes inside. In almost every other circumstance, it's just going to over-penetrate. That's why you fire high explosive at Smolensk. Yes, I know it looks like a cruiser. Technically it is a cruiser, but just imagine it's a destroyer that happens to have a citadel. 
none of them are learning the lesson. They're still trying to get him with the AP. It's still hitting. It's still doing minimal damage, and they're still dying. There goes the Savetsky Rossier. That's kill number seven. The North Carolina just ran out of friends. He's still firing AP. Although, well, up until now, at that kind of angle, the AP could have scored a penetrating hit. Although the North Carolina didn't know that, he couldn't see BFK because he's inside a smokescreen. But now that BFK only has the North Carolina to worry about, he can angle against him to ensure that the AP continues to do minimal damage. And of course the North Carolina now has other things to worry about. The Lexington's managed to get a drop on him. Scored at least one torpedo hit. He's on fire. He's probably flooding. And the turn meant that he couldn't bring the guns to bear in time. And there's kill number eight. Ten kills between the two of them. Only one other member of the team has managed to sink anything, and the only thing left is the enemy carrier. It's only tier 8, but it is a Karga, and the Karga's party trick is that it has a lot of aircraft reserves. It's almost impossible to deplane a... well, it's impossible to deplane any carrier in World of Warships since the CV rework, when they were all equipped with magical aircraft-producing fairies, but the Karga in particular, as you can clearly see, has so many aircraft reserves that even now at the end of a battle when it's the last ship left, it can still field full squadrons. The other thing that you do well to bear in mind when it comes to attacking the Karga, if you're in something as lightly armoured as, for example, a destroyer or a tier 10 Soviet light cruiser, is that while it is by no means as ridiculously overpowered when it comes to secondaries as, for example, the higher tier German aircraft carriers, the Karga still has a lot of 100mm secondary guns. I have actually seen people taking Kargas into random battles tricked out in full secondary builds, and I'm not saying that it's a recommended build for a Karga aircraft carrier, but it can be quite dangerous. Unfortunately for the Karga, it needs time for those secondaries to work, and time is not something that BFK is going to give him. And that is kill number 9, with 438,707 damage done for BFK for life in the Smolensk. Not the most damage that anybody has ever done in this ship on the North American server, because that was also BFK for life when he did more than 450,000 damage <laughs> in this same ship. But I guess when you're already in first place, there's nothing wrong with second place too. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, BFK for life with the second highest amount of damage ever done in the Smolensk on the North American server. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.